The year is 2008. Well, actually, it's 2019. Boris Johnson is the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Donald Trump is President of the United States. The Amazon rainforest burns. Our world is slowly dying. Anyway, imagine it's 2008. Steven Gerrard is still captain of Liverpool. Mohamed Salah is playing youth football in Egypt. James Milner, 22 years old and not yet made of Ribena, has just moved to Aston Villa. Oh, and Madonna and Justin Timberlake top the UK charts. Now you feel really old. Further away in Germany, a charismatic manager gaining traction and kudos has just been given the daunting task of reviving the fortunes of Borussia Dortmund, a proud club which has not only been threatened by Bundesliga relegation in recent times, but bankruptcy too. Jürgen Klopp, who spent seven years with Mainz and helped them gain promotion to Germany's top division, is now with Dortmund. There is a lot which points to the situation Klopp inherited the Dortmund. There's the financial mismanagement and the 13th place finished the season before, but the UEFA device coefficients reveal the staggering level of decline in the European competition. UEFA coefficients are a complicated beast, but best simplified as such. And yes, I did say simplified. Each club is given a coefficient score by Europe's governing body based on their performances in the previous five seasons. Performances are judged on the competition itself, so the Champions League is worth more than the Europa League. They're judged on individual match results, win, lose or draw. And it's also on the progress of the competition. So winners are allocated more than runners-up, who are allocated more than semi-finalists, and so on. This determines their ranking and subsequently their seeding in European competition. If a club has been successful in Europe for the past five seasons, like Real Madrid, who sit top on the current day rankings, they will be higher in their coefficients. Have you got that? Good. No, I haven't either. Let's crack on. Anyway, when Klopp joined Dortmund, the club sat 110th with no participation in Europe since 2005. Even then, their three previous campaigns ended at the hands of, by pronunciation alert, Sigma Omeluk, Genk and Socho. Clubs above Dortmund in these rankings included Hearts, Alemannia Aachen, Millwall, yes, that Millwall, Perugia, Livorno and FC Dnipro, who are now defunct Ukrainian club. The UEFA Cup shootout defeat to Serie A side Udinese in the first month of the job meant Dortmund would drop further to 120th in the rankings the following season. It is important to point out that at this point, Liverpool sit third. Then, the climb. No, not the hit Miley side as single, but the actual climb. Klopp would guide Dortmund to the Europa League in 2011, but go out of the group stage to Sevilla and PSG. A year later, another group stage exit, this time the Champions League, although he would beat Greek side Olympiakos and draw with Arsenal. The following season, Dortmund would shock the world, reaching the Champions League final at Wembley, beating Ajax, Manchester City, Shakhtar Donetsk, Malaga and Real Madrid en route. Bayern Munich would stop the fairy tale. Thanks a bunch for that, I and Robin. But Klopp has put Dortmund back on the map and we're up to 31st. Two more seasons of relative Champions League success, a quarter-final and last 16 appearance, meant Klopp departed the club after seven years and they were 13th, a rise of 97 places. Juventus, Man City, AC Milan and Olympique Lyonnais were all below them. As were Liverpool. Way, way below, in fact. Third when Klopp took over at Dortmund in 2008. I did tell you to remember that. The Reds now sat 40 seconds. Teams above them included Anderlecht, Galatasaray, Ruben Kazan and still FC Dnipro. Still alive at this point, still in the Ukraine. Klopp arrived at Liverpool shortly into the 2015-16 season with the Reds' last home game under Brendan Rodgers seeing them held at home by Swiss side FC Sion. Since then, Anfield has stayed. A Europa League final appearance, losing to Sevilla in Baal, moved the club up to number 35. After a year's hiatus, Liverpool reached the Champions League final, beating the likes of Porto, Manchester City and Roma. This moved them up to 22nd. The triumph for Madrid in June, when Liverpool became champions of Europe for the sixth time, followed victories against the likes of PSG, Napoli, Porto, Bayern Munich, Barcelona and Tottenham Hotspur. It means Liverpool begin this European campaign ranked 11th, two spaces higher than where Klopp guided Dortmund to. In fact, the Germans would actually peak at 7th in 2016-17, thanks to a mixture of Klopp's success and Thomas Tuchel's guiding the club to the Europa League and Champions League quarterfinals. I'm not quite sure what happened when they got to the Europa League quarterfinals. You might have to ask Dejan Lovren. The leap of 29 places is not as drastic as this 97 which happened at Dortmund, but Liverpool will continue to rise. 
Next season, the 2014-15 campaign, which harms their coefficient, will disappear. If you need a reminder of what happened in that season, that is when Liverpool drew with Baal, drew with Ludogorets, were knocked out of the Champions League group stage and were eventually eliminated from the Europa League by Besiktas. Liverpool are almost guaranteed to have a stronger score for 2020, which will replace that season, meaning a rise in the rankings is inevitable. This is what Klopp does. This is what Klopp's doing. After awaking one sleeping giant in Europe, he's done so again, with three finals in four years and the continent's top prize captured. This giant, or as Klopp would say, mentality giant, shows no sign of retiring to its bed just yet.